Welcome to another edition of Myrtle's Rants. Today I'd like to chat prohibitionists. Like, who are they and what do they say? Because they get up our noses all the time, even after all these years. You know, in the beginning of all of this, and around my 2014, 2015, Jules and I really had to get a very clear picture of what we were up against. You know, they say, know your enemy, as it were. And as we all know, the prohibition of cannabis has been one of the most successful propaganda campaigns of the last hundred years. It's been complete and absolute. And it doesn't matter where we go in this cannabis world, there will always be the prohibitionists. And our legal team, Paul Michael in particular, said to us one day, there will always be that sector who will never ever believe you that cannabis is not as bad as everybody makes out to be. And I think that this really reared its ugly head again this past week with certain court rulings and whatnot. The most significant one is the confirmation by the Constitutional Court of South Africa of a Gauteng High Court uh, judgment that was actually handed down, I think, in 2019 or 2020. This was the confirmation of the, at the highest court in the land that children, minors, those human beings under the age of 18 years old cannot be criminalized for cannabis. This was a result of four Krugersdorp children who were caught with Dacher at school. And they were then sentenced to go to uh, the Busasa Correctional Facility in Krugersdorp. And now we know about Busasa and we know about all of their roles in state capture and the shady dealings there. So that's a, that's a name that doesn't surprise us that they were running this correctional facility. These children were kept for 77 days. And luckily, the Center for Child Law picked up on this and came to these families' aid and took this all the way to the High Court as an appeal for the actual decriminalization of cannabis for children. You know, the thing of Dacha in school has been forever and ever and ever. I'm sure it's been since, you know, when the, when the cave kids were learning how to paint on cave walls, they were sneaking the Dacha. I don't know how many people, respected people, politicians, leading business people, when you're sitting around and you're having a coffee and you're having a spliff and you say to them, well, when did you start smoking weed? And I can tell you that the majority of them will say 13, 15, 16. Me, myself, I had my first spliff when I was 19, so I was maybe older than most. And that certainly has to do with the fact that when you're in your teenage years, you have this inquiring mind and the and the the forbidden fruit is certainly something that's very appealing because you are busy forging your own identity during those years between the ages of say maybe 10 and 18 where you're pushing the boundaries you're going against your your parents you're going against the school regime and whatnot now don't get me wrong i don't think that there's any place for cannabis uh, and children just as a mere flippant pursuit I don't think one should ever recommend the joining of children in cannabis unless unless it is for religious reasons and thank goodness now we have these very high CBD strains so if the Rastafari children are maybe drinking cannabis tea or being smudged with cannabis smoke it is possible now that we can grow these low THC strains and and those can be used and certainly I we've heard of the of the Rastafari communities doing this and there's also the other thing of is if a minor needs cannabis uh, for health reasons and we certainly have heard from parents whose under 18 kids have, have been helped with things like ADHD and OCD and various health conditions that tend to surface during puberty when, when the body is changing so radically one often finds underlying mental health issues surfacing. And that's another reason why cannabis needs to be legalized so that access to children can be controlled. But those children who need cannabis can have access to it. And I know that at the United Nations, there's always resolutions and things being drawn up and discussions being had of access to controlled medicines. And luckily, we have managed to have the rescheduling of cannabis at the United Nations. We've had changes to our Medicines Act here in South Africa, but it's not enough. 
But anyway, I digress because we started speaking about prohibitionists. So this ruling in the this ju judgment that was confirmed in the Constitutional Court was reported by Carte Blanche, that very long-running news and actuality program that airs every Sunday night. So obviously we've been watching all everything surrounding this Concord judgment and this carte blanche thing popped up on my feed. So I watched it and then I looked on Facebook on the, all of the comments. Now there were 198 comments and overwhelmingly prohibitionists. Oh no, so now they're going to be serving Dacha to our children in school. Oh no, well look, at this is what South Africa is coming to with. They're going to allow our kids to smoke Dacha in school. You know, really. So I just have to keep reminding myself of what Paul Michael said all those years ago. There will always be those people. There will always be those people. But us as cannabis activists and people who have a profound relationship with this plant must always remember that we need to know the arguments. And you can go to Fields of Green for All's website and we have under green info, you will see that we have a section called website resources. And there you will find under our four platforms of use, you will find all of the resources that we've gathered over the years in the studies. Like that study in Jamaica that followed a big group of Rastafari and non Rastafari children from from uh, when their mothers were pregnant all the way through to when they were school go going age. I think they were maybe about three or four years into school when they concluded the study. It was done by a certain Dr. Melanie Dreyer and it's a very famous study and they actually find a, found a slight cognitive advantage to those mothers who had consumed cannabis during pregnancy and those mothers that continued to use uh, use cannabis in during the childhood. They weren't administering cannabis to the children in the study. It was about the mothers and how the children's cognitive ability when once they went to school going age. And if you look under health uses on their website resources, you'll find that study by Dr. Melanie Dreyer. And then another thing that came up that we just had to laugh at this week was that NIDA, which is the National Institute for Drug Abuse in America funded by the prohibitionists because if there's a study you must always follow the money who has funded it and the thing is that scientific studies are not all oh it's amazing it's a scientific study no follow the money see who they wanted an outcome so they went and did a certain research study in order to confirm a predetermined outcome and that sort of academic bias is incredibly incredibly tricky so this study said that, oh, there is a chance that cannabis will cause infertility in men, or it will affect the fertility of men, it will affect their sperm count. So we had such a laugh because, of course, it was NIDA, so they are most often funded by, by the prohibitionists. And then I'll just leave you with this thought. If cannabis causes infertility in men, then have you ever been to a Rastafari community? Have you ever been to Judah Square? And you see all those beautiful little smiling faces running around everywhere and Sister Carrie's preschool that she has there where she teaches the children from a very, very young age and there's a very strong sense of community. All the parents are very involved in their children's lives. And now you think that cannabis causes infertility when every single one of those men consumes cannabis on a daily basis? I don't think so. So you have a, an amazing Rastafari community outside NISDA in South Africa and you have NIDA in America saying that, oh, more, more research needs to be done, but there is a big chance. And what's going to happen when we go back to court for trial of the plant too? I bet you that the Department of Social Development are going to poke their nose in somewhere and they're going to quote that NIDA. And then we're going to have to spend our and your hard-earned money that we are raising to go back to court in having to argue these stupid studies. So watch out for the prohibitionists. If you're on social media and you see them talking shit, call them out for it. Call them out for it. And if you need evidence to back it up, contact us. There's a million ways to contact us, but the best way is via our contact form on fieldsofgreenforall.org.za. And that's all I've got to say about prohibition today. Thanks very much. Music